Lies, lies, lies. It's common knowledge that lying is wrong. Then why is it okay to lie to ourselves? On today's show, we'll dig into the most common guitar playing lies that we tell ourselves that halt guitar progress and make guitar playing a guilt laden activity, as opposed to what it should be a fun and fulfilling journey. Let's go ahead and write this guitar geek ship and make guitar playing fun again. Hey, TAC family, this is episode 264 of the Acoustic Tuesday Show, a show packed full of inspiration and fun designed to help you get more fulfillment, progress, and joy from your guitar journey. Now, throughout today's episode, I'll be sprinkling in some acoustic news you can use, and that includes not one, but two Martin guitars from 1941 and much, much more. Plus, you're gonna meet TAC family member Don, who's gonna share some guitar routine tips with you that will help with consistency and follow through. That's all happening in a little bit, but first, let's dive into 11 guitar lies that are halting your progress. Now, I need to be honest here. I did not create this list to point the finger. I created this list to help us all overcome self-limiting beliefs. We all have them. In fact, I'm guilty of a lot of these lies on this list, guilty of telling myself a lot of these lies. Now, there's one thing I want you to do before we get started, and it's a promise I need you to make to me. Now, you probably know somebody who wants to play guitar, but hasn't started yet. You probably know somebody that maybe just started playing guitar and maybe they're frustrated. Now check this out. A couple years ago, Fender did a study and they found that 90% of new guitar players quit within their first year. That sucks. And I believe with my entire being that today's episode will help some of those guitar players not quit. Because I do believe a lot of guitar players quit because of the lies I'm gonna cite here in just a moment. So make that promise to me. Share this episode with a budding guitar player, uh, maybe somebody who did just start. Okay, let's start examining some of these lies. I have 11 of them, and to be honest, I'm just gonna rip right through them because we don't need to spend a lot of time on each of them, but we do need to spend a lot of time on how to solve this problem so we can all have more fun and achieve more progress. Lie number 11, the time crunch lie. It comes in the form of statements like this. I don't have any time to play the guitar. I'm just too busy to play regularly. And I ask, have you heard of the 10 minute rule? Yes, you can play guitar for just 10 minutes a day. And if you do so consistently, you will achieve progress. I'm not gonna have a solution to all of these, but I just wanted to mention that. And I'll mention little tidbits along the way. Lie number 10, the eternal destination lie. Statements are made like this. I'll never be any good, so why try? What does good mean? I don't know. It's, it's, it's different for everybody, but as long as you play consistently, you will have fun. And if you have fun, you will get good, whatever that means. I'd like to strike that word from the vocabulary. The next lie, the gas lie. The gas lie, guitar acquisition syndrome. It comes in the form of saying things like, I need another guitar. Now, let me, let's just stop the list here. I love getting new guitars. You love getting new guitars we've established that baseline. But when getting new guitars is something that is getting in your way, maybe you say something like, oh, I can't play that on this guitar. I need another guitar to play that. That's the lie, okay? The guitar that you have, whatever it may be, is just perfect enough for you to play whatever you want. Now, you know, the caveat is like, if you wanna play electric guitar, playing it on acoustic guitar just isn't gonna be the same. But I think you catch my drift with the gas lie. The next lie on my list, the know-it-all lie. We tell ourselves that, oh, I need to have a comprehensive understanding of music theory. I need to have a comprehensive understanding of, of music in general. I need to know everything before I can play anything. Not true, you don't need to know anything about music theory to play the guitar. You can quite simply start playing today and listen to things that sound good. If you make something on the guitar that sounds good, be it a chord, be it a melody, being just a single note, 
that's good. You don't, you don't need to know why it sounds good quite yet, but all you need to know is that it's fun and that you enjoy it. No, you don't have to know everything. The next lie on my list, the age lie. This one is all too common. The age lie comes in the form of statements as such, and I wrote these down because I've heard them before. I played in the past, and I won't be able to play that, that way again, so I may as well not even try. Or, I didn't start playing guitar when I was young, so it's useless to start now. That's so not true. Playing guitar, having fun, being consistent, enjoying playing guitar has nothing to do with how old you are, or whether or not you played in the past. It quite simply has nothing to do with that. You can have fun starting to play guitar today, starting playing guitar today. Whether you're 85 or eight, it does not matter. And previous experience doesn't matter either. Okay, that's in the past. It's back there. We're talking about today. We can have fun today, right? Okay, so that's the age lie. This next one, <laughs> <laughs> this is a fun one. Uh, you can have fun with this right along with me. In fact, in the comments, if you want to finish some of these statements, I'd love for you to do that. Uh, the next lie, the fill in the blank lie. It comes in the form of statements like, I'll be ready when fill in the blank. I'll be ready when I get this song perfect. I'll be ready when I know how to play this scale. I'll be ready when I'm more comfortable playing in front of other people. I'll be ready when I have the right guitar. I'll be ready when fill in the blank. To be honest, if you continue with that lie, you'll never be ready because you'll always find something that's getting in your way. Instead of finding something that's getting in your way, try to find something that allows you to do that thing you want to do, be it an open mic, be it starting guitar for the first time. Try and find an excuse as to why you should do the thing as opposed to why you can't do that thing. The next lie, and I've got only a few more here. I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five more for you. Uh, the next lie is the dunce lie. You know, the, the old dunce cap, you had to sit in the corner with the big coney hat on that said dunce. Uh, the dunce lie comes in the form of statements like, everybody knows more than me, so I shouldn't even try. That's not true. We're all in this together. We all have questions. We're all at different experience levels. So yeah, somebody might know something that you don't, but that doesn't mean that everybody knows more than you and that you shouldn't try at all. It's quite simply not true. It's a lie. It's a self-limiting belief. The next lie, the treadmill lie. Oh, this is a fun one. Um, the treadmill lie is, I practice a lot. Why am I not any good? This is a lie that I've told myself this is a lie that I've heard other guitar players tell themselves. And I want to be very clear here. There's a difference between practicing and trying something new. But there's a difference between practicing and trying something new and rehearsing, okay? Practicing, trying something new is pushing your skill set. It's pushing your boundary of comfort. You're not gonna sound good if you're trying something new you're gonna struggle with it. it. There's gonna be flubby notes, there's gonna be fuzzy notes. It's going to be frustrating because it's trying something new you've never done before. Rehearsing is playing the same thing that you know over and over and over and over again. If you play the same five things time and time again, you're not going to get any better. So what I hear is people saying, yeah, I practice a lot. And then when I ask them what they practice, they end up saying the same five songs that they already know. So even if you practice a lot, if you're playing the same thing, you're not getting any better. So I think it's very, we need to make a clear distinction between practice and rehearsal. And when I hear people say they practice a lot and they're not getting any better, chances are their guitar playing time falls in that category of rehearsal. The next, oh, this is one that I fell for big time uh, when I first started. The perfect schedule lie. The perfect schedule lie. I think to some degree, we've all fallen for this lie. We've all fallen for this self-limiting belief. It comes in the form of statements, I can totally practice for an hour a day, no problem. Yeah, it, you're probably right. If you wrote out your schedule on paper, you could find those little chunks of time that 
are an hour long and you can say, yeah, I'm gonna practice then, 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 boom. Well, life is filled with curveballs and detours and things you quite simply cannot see coming. So what might look good on paper doesn't always work out, okay? So just saying you can easily practice for an hour a day is kind of setting yourself up to fail. And I say this because I would much rather you approach playing the guitar by setting a minimum time commitment as opposed to a maximum time commitment. Maybe you can, maybe you do have the time to practice for an hour a day, but set yourself up in a win-win scenario. Say, I'm gonna practice for 10 minutes. And if I get to practice more, if I get to play more, great. Okay, see what you're doing there is saying, well, if I play guitar for a minimum of 10 minutes, I can celebrate that because I did what I committed to. That's a win. If you go beyond those 10 minutes and practice for a half hour, an hour, well, that's also a win. So you're giving yourself a win-win scenario. Your only option is success if you set that minimum time commitment. So avoid that perfect schedule lie. That is something that will get you into a lot of trouble. It certainly did for me when I first started playing. Two more for you. Uh, number, the next one, the genetic lie. The genetic lie, it comes in the form of a very simple statement. I'm not musical. I don't come from a musical family. I don't have a musical bone in my body. False, false. Everybody can play music in one form or another. Music is not a skill you're born with. It's a skill that you cultivate, like playing hockey, like playing baseball, like, like doing anything, rollerblading, driving, rollerblading, who rollerblades anymore? Uh, driving a car, right? Those are all skills you acquire. Playing guitar is a skill that you acquire. You're not, you're not born playing guitar. You don't come out of the womb playing guitar, although that'd be pretty neat. Um, it'd certainly make the delivery room a really fun place to be. It'd be like a jamboree. But um, anyways, no, that's a lie that people tell themselves. It's an excuse to, to fight that fear of starting. If you feel like, oh, well, I'm, I, there's not a musical bone in my body. I wasn't born with that talent. Well, then you're just making, ex making an excuse to not even try. I don't want you to do that. I want you to try because you can succeed. You will succeed. Playing guitar is a skill that you cultivate. The final lie that I have for you, this one is one that I, I too fell for. Um, and this, a lot of these I've actually fallen for. The final lie is the gate keeper lie, the gatekeeper lie. And this has to do with skill levels and trying out songs, okay? You see a song that has an intermediate or an advanced skill level and you think to yourself, you say things like, I'm not intermediate and I'm not advanced, so I, I shouldn't try those songs at all. That's false. I think levels when it comes to songs is irrelevant because the bottom line is, if you want to learn a song, you'll do whatever it takes to learn that song. Case in point, and I'll use a song from my own guitar journey, uh, the song, The Last Steam Engine Train, song by John Fahey, a very intricate finger picking song. If you've heard any guitar review that I've ever done, you'll hear that song on it. That was one of the first finger picking songs I ever learned. And it took me, I wanna say probably a month and a half, two months, maybe into three months to learn that song and it was touted as an advanced level song. And I'm not saying it was easy, it was very difficult, but the driving factor behind me learning that song was the fact that I wanted to learn that song. So don't fall for the gatekeeper lie. If you wanna learn it, go and learn it. Adjust it to your skill level, adjust it to the level that's comfortable for you, and then make it more intricate and complicated as you gain more comfort. I used skill level there. I shouldn't have used skill level there. But as you can see, th this, this list is, is a list of things that I've heard other people tell themselves. I've told myself to kind of halt progress. And we do it in an unconscious way, but we do it to stay safe. Okay, we do it to stay safe. We do it to keep ourselves from feeling that discomfort of trying something new, from feeling that discomfort of success. And that sounds like a funny statement. It sounds like an oxymoron. Why would success feel uncomfortable? Well, let me explain. I've got a couple of notes here that I wanna consult. First of all, the common thread with all of these lies is that no one is telling you this. There's no external person saying these things to you. 
you are saying these things to you. And it's really easy to stop. You just have to stop. That's it. We're very stubborn people. I'm a stubborn person. We're very staunch in our beliefs. But when you find yourself saying self-limiting things, try and stop that. Try and catch yourself. And I hope that this list allows you to start highlighting some of these things. Because if we can turn these negatives into positives, if we can cite these excuses that we're telling ourselves, then we're far better off and we can right the ship. See, our body, our brain wants to keep us safe. Being safe means playing the same things over and over again. Being, being safe means not going out on a limb and trying something new. Being safe means making excuses to, say, to stay in our safe little bubble. I don't want you to be safe anymore. I don't want you to lie to yourself anymore. I don't want you to hold any self-limiting beliefs. So when these come up, identify them and choose the other path. Try not to be safe. Try to live in that discomfort because with that discomfort, true growth comes. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox now. Those are the lies that we tell ourselves and those are the things that, again, I want you to just be aware of because I think awareness brings about this wonderful opportunity to choose a different path. And that's, that's what I'm encouraging you to do. Now, I do have a question that I want to ask you is, uh, can you think of any other lies that maybe you've heard other players tell themselves? Maybe you've told yourself uh, uh, that I didn't mention on my list? Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Spell it out for us. I'd love to, um, I'd love to hear what, what you've encountered as a self-limiting belief. Um, and there's another question I have. Uh, are you guilty of any of the lies that I mentioned? It's okay if you are. As I mentioned, I'm, I'm guilty of, of quite a few of them. And I think the more honest we are with ourselves, the better off we can be with not only only the fun we experience with guitar, but the progress we experience as well. So again, let me know that in the comments below. On to our very first news segment. And uh, this first chunk of acoustic news you can use contains one of two Martin guitars from the year 1941. And I want to show you this. This comes from Emerald City Guitars. And they recently got in Bob Wills 1941 D45. This is one of only like 95 guitars, 95 Martin D45s made in the year 1941. I don't know if I'm not exact on that number, but I do know it's below 100. I believe it's below 100. Um, anyways, this is a monumental guitar for a number of reasons. Obviously, the provenance of it being Bob Will's guitar, but also the fact that it is such a rare instrument in such good condition. And who else but Jason Verlind, Jason Verlindy, I got to get that last name right. Jason Verlindy from the Fretboard Journal was there to check it out. Here's a quick clip of the video they did. I do recommend you check out the entire thing. It's rare to see one of the real batch, one of the original batch ones in the wild. This guitar is super light. This guitar doesn't look like it's been beat up, but it sounds like it's been played constantly, which is a really rare thing. You've seen guitars that are totally played to death and they sound fantastic and you're like, well, it, that guitar really, you know, worked for it. This guitar looks like it never really had much pick wear or anything, which is kind of remarkable, but it still sounds totally broken in and well played. There's a list on Wikipedia, I was like, before I came over here, of, of every D45 and the serial number. And it's hilarious because most of them are celebrity owned. Most of them have had some modifications unlike this one, but a whole bunch of them, it just says known to exist. Next up is a book written by Sarah Voss. Now that name likely sounds familiar because she was in the recent songwriters episode and she's the front woman for Dead Horses. Well, she recently wrote a book entitled Glass on the Passenger Seat a travel journal. Now, a uh, quick description of this book, and I thought this was really interesting, and I love books like this where it's a collection of real life experiences because it just, I don't know, it kind of gets you one step closer to that, that writer's brain, in this case, a, a songwriter's brain. Here's the description of the book. Glass on the passenger seat is gleaned from two years of journal entries made by Americana musical artist Sarah Voss of Dead Horses. 
It is a no pulled punches memoir of her struggles with family history, depression, anxiety, and life on the road. Equal parts heartbreaking and adventurous, it is a rare look into the life and mind of one of the upper Midwest's best current songwriters. I mean, I pre-ordered mine. Uh, this episode will come out in November. Um, the book comes out in October, October 18th to be specific. I pre-ordered it. It's now available to order, so I encourage you to check it out. Uh, you can find it on ramshacklepress.org. Um, I'm really, really excited for this book. I really, really am. Sarah Voss is a great human being, uh, a friend of mine, and uh, it'll be really cool to read that. Uh, the final news item for I... Uh, the final news item that I have for your first dose here is a quote from Adam Grant. I've brought up his quotes numerous times on the show. They always hit you where you need to be hit. And I thought this was very much related to those guitar lies. Here's what Adam Grant had to say about beating yourself up. Beating yourself up doesn't make you stronger. It leaves you bruised. Being kind to yourself isn't about ignoring your weaknesses. It's about giving yourself permission to learn from your mistakes. We grow by embracing shortcomings, not punishing them. And there's this wonderful illustration by Liz and Molly, uh, and it's it's kind of this this um, uh, you know, two scenarios when when you do something well and you say, oh, that was good, versus when you make a minor mistake and it just comes with this this avalanche of self doubt, self criticism, and you know, beating yourself up. You know, I think it's really interesting that I found this quote at a time when I was writing this episode. Because, man, I think a lot of those guitar lies, as I mentioned, come from self-protection. We don't want to beat ourselves up. So don't. Adam Grant just said, don't do it. Uh, it's not tough. It's not, you know, you're not stronger from beating yourself up. Uh, it actually does a lot more damage than we think it does. So no guitar lies and no beating yourself up. Okay, let's, let's be vulnerable as a group of guitar geeks. I feel like this is the self-help episode. Um, anyways, let's, let's move right along here. <laughs> oh, that's good. The self-help episode. That'll be the title of today's episode. Uh, I want you to meet TAC family member Don. I interviewed Don at the last Tony's Acoustic Challenge 90-day progress party, and he, he really said a lot of things that I thought were beneficial in terms of Getting your guitar routine, positioning your guitar routine in such a way that helps with follow through and consistency. And I want to hit, I want to hit the consistency topic right off the bat because Don is retired, and we were speaking with one another, and he said, "You know, I always thought that when I was retired, I'd have all of this time, but it turns out that by the end of the day, I feel like the time is gone." Remember that number one guitar lie, the time lie. Well, anyways, Don found a hack for this. He says that if he makes sure that he plays guitar in the morning, he's guaranteed to play guitar for that day. Whereas if he waits till afternoon, things get sketchy. Uh, here's basically, here's, here's what Don had to say in his own words. And that's kind of what my guitar routine is playing. Starting to play around, do my morning chores, uh, start to play around nine o'clock in the morning and just do it. And then usually when I, when I sit down to play, I start with a warm up. I go into the tech, uh, and I usually play for about an hour. Um, and that's, and that's what I do. If I don't, if I don't play before noon, then if I'm going to play that day, it gets a little sketchy. So I try yeah. to do it in the morning and it, that's kind of like what my routine looks like. That's where I'm the most successful when I do that. Now, Don does something else, and I don't know if he's doing this consciously or unconsciously, but he's positioning himself to follow through when it comes to his goals, because his goals involve his family. Number one, he wants to play songs for his mom from memory. Number two, he's played songs with his daughter before. And I think this involvement of other people, specifically family, aids and follow through. Here are those very scenarios in Don's description. So my goal is I just went to see my mom. Uh, she's older. She's like 85. And I had to, uh, she had some issues. So I went back there for 10 days, but I forgot my tabs. And my mom's like, Hey, cause I have gone back there and I've played songs for her. She goes, can you play some songs? And I could only think of like one or two songs that I knew all the way through from memory. So my 90 day goal, and this is the reason why I started playing anyway. I just wanted to play songs. 
is to really focus on learning to play at least 10 songs from memory. I can play probably 20 songs, 25 songs from tab, but, mm -hmm. but I don't have to commit it to memory. And I think that's really cool. But like what Beth was saying, you know, playing in front of family, like I've been able to play happy birthday to my niece or my daughter and I, who, my daughter sings really well. Um, we did a song for one of my really close friends in Ireland. They had their 50th wedding anniversary and we did the Irish wedding song and I played the guitar and my daughter sang and it was so cool. It was so much fun. And then we posted it on Facebook and we got a little five, five minutes of fame here. So, and playing with my daughter was really nice. cool. It was so much fun. Huge thanks to Don for sharing those two very important things. Number one, the morning is a magical time. If you've ever found yourself saying, I'll play guitar later, or if you've ever found yourself getting to the end of the day feeling like, oh my gosh, I didn't play guitar at all. I guess I have to squeeze it in now. Play guitar in the morning. This way, boom, it's done, and you can carry on with your day. The second important thing that he shared was following through on your goals. And he's positioning himself in such a way that he's including his family. They're depending on him. His mom wants him to play songs. So he's actually involving her in his goal. When you have somebody else depending on you to succeed in your goal, you're that much more likely to do it. And again, I don't know if Don's doing that consciously or unconsciously, but again, he's positioning himself in such a way that he's gonna follow through on that goal consistency and follow through. Thanks again, Don, for sharing those things with us. Now I wanna move on to what the TAC family is working on today. Now this is a cool week within Tony's Acoustic Challenge because this week is a five-day blues challenge. We abandon the normal schedule and we focus on one thing. This week it's the blues and here's what the TAC family is working on. Your challenge for today is entitled Triple Threat, and it gets its name from the three different fretting positions that your fretting hand will assume. Let me go ahead and play it for you so you know what it sounds like. You'll notice this isn't a guitar lick. It's more of a 12 bar blues progression. So you might be thinking, Tone, have you lost your mind? It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday Tack Guitar Lick Challenge Day. What is the deal with this blues progression? Well, within Tack this week, it's a five day blues challenge, meaning every single day, every daily challenge is a different variation on the 12 bar blues. This just so happens to be the one for Tuesday, Triple Threat Tuesday. Kind of cool. I dig that. Anyways, TAC fam, if you want to learn this note for note, go ahead and log in, click start challenge from your homepage, boom, you'll go right to the teaching video. Once you get comfortable with it, you can move along to the play along video where you can adjust the speed to what's ever comfortable for you. And then you can pull up the tab in a separate window by clicking that tab icon in the lower right hand corner. Okay, so very cool. This is a chord progression. How are we going to do this today? Because as you can see, the 12 bar blues progression fits just fine. We can hear the musical context, but we're gonna do a little bit of, rev of a reversal today, of a reversal today, that's a mouthful. What we're gonna do is take one chunk of this 12 bar blues progression and turn it into a lick. Yes, we're gonna turn it into a lick. So I'm gonna show you this, and it's an interesting way to start thinking about things. If you play something that's repeated, like this 12 bar blues progression, you can take a small piece of that and stand it on its head a little bit and maybe create a lick out of it. Here's an example. I think it's so cool that you can take a repeated rhythmic phrase, like the one we used in this 12 bar blues progression, and create something entirely new. In this case, a guitar lick. And that's exactly what I want you to take from this little mini lesson. I want you to start looking at the things you already play through different lenses, from different perspectives, because chances are you can create something entirely new from something you already know. Now, I wanna talk about something real quick before we get back to the show, and that is distraction. It's our number one enemy as guitar players. It's our number one enemy when it comes to learning something new. 
So I want you to fight distraction at every turn. And I bring this up because this happens to me all the time when I'm learning the blues or something related to the blues because I kind of have my go-tos. I have my, my blues ruts, if you will. So when things start becoming difficult, what ends up happening is I, I can feel my brain reverting to the rut. It's like, go play something you know, go play something you're confident in, go play something that makes you sound good but that's not gonna get me any better. That's not gonna get you any better. So as you're learning new things, your brain's gonna start talking to you saying, gosh, this is really hard. You don't know how to do this and it's sounding really crummy. Why don't you go play that thing you already like the sound of? Why don't you go play that thing that you know you can already play? That sounds amazing. I want you to fight that urge. That's why the 10 minute rule is so important. I want you to focus for 10 minutes on something new, something that pushes you outside your comfort zone because that's exactly what's gonna make you better. Fight that distraction for at least 10 minutes and you'll be amazed at the impact it has on your guitar playing. Open wide, it's time for your second dose of acoustic news you can use. And kicking things off is none other than Mary Spender. Mary was just recently in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. She visited Martin Guitar and oh, what was she able to do? She was able to play Kurt Cobain's D18. Yes, a D18 formerly owned by Kurt Cobain. Not only was she able to play it, she filmed herself playing it and she filmed herself playing the song Smells Like Teen Spirit. It is a captivating performance. Let's look at a small piece of it right now. I forget just why I taste, oh yeah, I guess it makes me smile. I found it hard, it's hard to find, oh well, whatever, never mind. Hello, 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 how low, hello, 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 how low. As promised, I have another Martin guitar from 1941 for you. Earlier in the show, I talked about Bob Wills, 1941 D45. Well, it turns out that Joe Bonamassa walked into Norman's Rare Guitars with a Triple O 45 from 1941. And they were able to do a little bit of a show and tell about this guitar and holy smokes, here's the crazy thing. That 1941 D45 that Bob Wills owned was in phenomenal shape. This 1941 triple O 45 that Joe Bonamassa owns is in ridiculously good shape as well. I don't know, maybe it's something in the air. This guitar is way cool. You gotta check out a piece of this video. Here it is. And it's still in tune. I just, I just literally pulled it out of the vault, but. And there's something to these things, you know? And that's why they're so valuable and sought after. It's just, and not being a solid, I'm being a solid body guy and not an acoustic guy. I didn't know if it was considered pre-war. Now, would you consider this pre-war being a 41? Well, we would probably call it pre-war. Whatever you want to call it, it's magnificent. Right. And there's very few of them around. The earliest ones were 12 fret with a slotted head. Right. So these are the more desirable. With the pick guard, the 14 fret, you have the access up to higher on the neck. Right. And, um, but just, you know, it doesn't get much better than this. And on those very sweet, clean vintage instrument notes, I think it's a great time to wrap up the Acoustic Tuesday show for today. But first, let's take a sneak peek into next week. And next week, I'm not sure what the hell I'm gonna do. I do know that next week's episode will be focused on acoustic guitar and using effects, but I'm not sure which effect I'll focus on. It's either gonna be delay or it's gonna be reverb. And you know what? I might get crazy. I might do both because both delay and reverb work so well on acoustic guitar. I wanna show you what they're all about. I wanna show you why you should entertain the idea of diving into this world of effects, specifically delay and reverb, because they're cool. I'm gonna bring in some of my favorite pedals, share them with you, uh, let you hear how they sound. It'll be a fun uh, hoot nanny of effects. It'll be a space hoot nanny, uh, if you will. Anyways, that was a long description of, of what's gonna happen next week on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. Before I let you go, please do remember this. Your success, however you define it for yourself, is directly related to your guitar routine. So please invest the time in developing your guitar routine and make sure, be absolutely certain to have fun every single day that you play. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek, and I'll see you next Tuesday on
on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Cheers, be nice, and play guitar.